Farm View with Kieran O'Connor on WLR. Brought to you by GlanviaConnect.com. Hello, welcome to Farm View. Well, as usual, it's Kieran O'Connor here with your weekly farming programme. And once again, I have a very busy show for you this week. On this week's programme, I'll talk to Martin Hayden, TD, of course, our new Minister of State at the Department of Agriculture. First of all, about the big story this week, the sacking of Agriculture Minister Barry Cowan, and also to preview next week's Farm Safety Week. I'll also talk to a founder of Warford based company, Pharma Hoof, who have developed a revolutionary new advanced hoof care system for the equine world globally. Great success story indeed, locally and also I'll have an update on the success of farmer markets in the county since their reopening. And plus, as always, we'll have our farming calendar. Farm View with Kieran O'Connor on WLR. With GlanviaConnect.com, Ireland's biggest online farming shop and more. Well, next week is a very important week in the farming calendar. It's Farm Safety Week and would you believe already this year, in 2020, we've had 14 deaths on farm. Of course, a lot of serious injuries as well. So to preview the event earlier, I'd set up to talk to Minister of State, the Partner of Agriculture, Martin Hayden TD, about next week and to preview next week and the importance of Farm Safety Week. But obviously in the meantime, we've had some breaking news. But first of all, Minister of State, Martin Hayden, you're very welcome to our programme. Thanks, Gareth. Martin, obviously, I'd organised to speak to you about next week, which we will do the Farm Safety Week, how important it is and the impact of it and the awareness that that, that it gives. But obviously, the big breaking news is that Minister Barry Cowan has been sacked and there's, uh, Dara Cleary has been appointed. So a hectic 24 hours for everyone involved in government, indeed, for the agricultural industry in Ireland. Yeah, look, it's, it's been a bit unsettling, I suppose, on a personal level. Um, huge sympathy for uh, Barry and his family. The, uh, politics is a, is a pretty brutal pursuit at times and um, you, when you're promoted it's very much in the public eye when you're demoted it is also that way um, the case and we worked closely together over the last two weeks with all of our initial briefings along with Minister Pippa Hackett three of us here in the department have been engaging with all department organisations and the different state bodies in the area of agriculture so we'll we'll continue that work now um, with Derek Kaleri who I know from my work in the Oireachtas before now as well and is, uh, is a fine politician as well and um, I've no doubt we'll have a very good interest in all things agriculture and we'll work closely with him in, in that from my own perspective having been appointed into the area's Minister of State with responsibility for research and development and new market development as well as farm safety I've a lot to get my teeth into the really important areas um, as we try and move forward in the sustainability piece for agriculture I think research and development is a key part of that new market development is critical when you look at the likes of um, the challenges that Brexit poses to us and the need for us to continuously find and expand uh, new markets abroad but um, I'm, I'm very proud of the fact that I'm the first Minister of State who's ever been given the title of farm safety in my title which shows the commitment of this government to really set about tackling an area uh, and I know that's why you're having me on this um, the whole area of farm safety is somewhere that we, we really have to make significant progress on Obviously for the Taoiseach Michal Martin it was a very difficult one but look I suppose from everyone's point of view park it and move on is the key here Derek Cleary is the new man at the helm and indeed as you said uh, there's a lot of bigger fish to fry over the coming months in particular when you look at COVID the impact of COVID you have, you have Brexit you have the environment and of course the ongoing farm safety which now is part of your portfolio which is important. Yeah, look, ultimately the, the decision was one for the Taoiseach. Um, uh, he made a judgment call on his dealings with Barry Cowan, but our focus in government at, um, at this difficult time remains, as you say, firmly in restoring the economy and renewing society following COVID, as well as, you know, our, from a Fine Gael perspective, we've steered the country through the depths of the COVID emergency and the UK's departure from the EU to date. And right now, is the focus of our colleagues is on finalising the July job stimulus uh, that hopefully will have a good measure in there around the credit guarantee scheme uh, for, for farmers and for the agriculture sector and we'll have um, you know hopefully some progress on the July stimulus and announcement on that next week and that'll be the latest step in our recovery plan and this stimulus will help businesses to stay open and to reopen mm-hmm. and will hopefully save jobs and create jobs around rural Ireland which is what we need to do. Obviously Minister Cleary's first big official outing will be on Monday next of course we have the uh, EU Agricultural Minister meeting in Brussels to discuss the ongoing reform of CAP that's going to be a crucial one and really jumping in at the deep end for Minister Cleary. Look it, there's no doubt the challenges the three of us as, as the three ministers in the department face we obviously have our priorities in the area of CAP and you know everything we want to do about improving uh, farmer incomes and you know making it viable for farm uh, for family farms to operate into the future as well as commercial farms very much is interlinked with the role in, uh, and with CAP but beyond that as well it's fine the programme for government we were looking to access new money on, under the carbon tax funding as well in the area of a, of a new well funded uh, rep scheme and um, also then looking to you know face up to, to the challenges of Brexit and the role Minister Cleary and myself and Mr Hackett will have 
have um, in our negotiations um, on the trade side of things and with mm-hmm. the Shavarnia, it will be absolutely crucial to make sure that the worst excesses of, of an old tra- trade deal Brexit um, are avoided if at all possible. Now obviously as you mentioned part of your portfolio of farm safety and it's great to see it really getting such such priority within the portfolio because it's an ongoing problem and indeed when you look at already in 2020 as I mentioned 14 deaths already and, and, a, and a very staggering figure 9 over 65 and then on top of that a lot of serious farm injury which we're very well aware of in our own family at the moment but in definitely it's an area that definitely needs awareness and constant reminder of the importance of it There's no doubt I'm sorry to hear about your own um, is it in your own family here and uh, like I come from a, a farm myself a mixed farm enterprise in South Kildare um, I, I, I suck there and tillage enterprise there and I know from having three small young boys at home on the farm clearly differentiating between where's the yard for them to play in and the yard beside it the tractors drive in and that is a workplace it's very hard to do so you know the, the farm is a very think workplace in in that it's generally for our houses um, and that is a huge difficulty and I also think it's a lot of complacency um, and I say that as a, as a farmer as, as well as um, as a minister with responsibility for this area. There is no doubt that in all the research that has been done, behavioural change um, is absolutely critical. This isn't about a big stick in us telling farmers what to do. We have got to get farmers to realise safety needs mm-hmm. to be their first thought in every day, their first thought in, um, in every task they undertake where they analyse the hazards in what they're about to undertake rather than an after and that's even more so now as we head into harvest time when farmers are working 12, 14, 16 hours a day rushing because weather is going to break. These are all the, the increased risks that that brings. And um, it also needs to become socially unacceptable for farmers to be taking shortcuts because we regularly do. We, we nearly wear it as a badge of honour. Mm-hmm. That, was a, that was a close one, you know, and that attitude has to change because one mistake, one accident has devastating consequences for entire families and communities. And I know that myself personally as well from um, neighbours that have lost accidents and my wife's family had a, a brief and a couple years ago in the same regard as well right. so I think there's very few farmers um, who don't know somebody um, who's either been injured or, or, or killed in a farm accident in recent years we have got to make the farm uh, safer and I'm determined as a minister with responsibility for this area to work with all of the sectors from the HSA all the other groups as well as the farming organisations mm. to lead that, that um, behavioural change and I know as a former Kildalton College uh, student you're well aware of John McNamara the huge work he's doing within Chagas and indeed the stats he was showing me there that the breakdown tractors and farm vehicles five machinery equipment three animals, livestock, they are the key areas and then the more staggering figure then as I mentioned 9 over 65, so children and the elderly and then machinery, livestock they are the key areas that need to be targeted Absolutely, yeah, that's it, like I think machinery is over 50% um, all, all in. and then when you look at the over 65 that figure is very high and then young children obviously the hazards, they don't see the dangers and we as parents have to make sure we instil that in them and that, that mm-hmm. we try and have parameters there where those areas are John McNamara is, is uh, still doing great work down in Kildalton, it's, it's 22 Two years ago since I, I passed out of uh, Kildalton and, and learned my trade. Health and safety and farm safety is probably more central to the green cert and to education now as it ever was. As Starting well as training you. days that were incorporated as part of the TAMS programme. I think that is key. It, you know, the, the raising farmers' awareness and it, it is it is not something we're going to just make as a switch on one day. This is going to be a continuous... It has to be kept front and centre really, Minister, because I know the theme next week, save lives, think safety, farm safety, but definitely that needs to be kept front and centre. It was kind to be an afterthought at a lot of discussion group and meetings so oh, by the way, lads, don't forget farm safety and keep an eye on it. But like, definitely, it has to be kept front and central. And I'm thrilled the fact that it's part of your portfolio. Yeah, absolutely, front and center. As I say, as you say, it's time to safety seriously is, is, is the, the headline title of Farm Safety Week next week, as well as the fact that the HSA have their second annual farm safety inspection campaign from the 13th of July to the 24th of July to coincide with Farm Safety Week. No more than um, we have to incorporate farm safety into our everyday lives on the farms. We have to incorporate it into everything uh, we do from a promotional perspective. So whether that's at the plough match or the Piltown show or something um, that people are going to or, or whether it's a scheme that's been brought in. Um, you know, even last year we had promotional literature sent out through the basic payments uh, system. So when le- farmers were receiving uh, literature from the department who were also receiving uh, this literature, we have to look at every opportunity there to mm-hmm. have that um, impact and to try and make farmers to stop and think. And, you know, I'll be sitting down with all the different groups. We have the Embrace Mass um, Ecumenical Service there uh, last week on the TV which, right. you know, Brian Rowan and the gang doing great work there. Yep. Up there in Abbey Leaks, absolutely. Yes. And like it, it is 
Carter mentioned to look at that spell during yes. the service where all the names of people who have passed away over the last number of years is called out the young and the old and, and we just have got to get that figured out because right now the farm is by a distance the most dangerous workplace in the country and um, we've got to tackle that and I'm determined to do something. Minister of State Department of Agriculture Martin Hayden TD of course uh, re- with responsibility for research development farm safety indeed new market development listen the best of luck in your portfolio once again I'm delighted that farm safety is part of your portfolio we look forward to talking to you when you come down to Warford in the South East thanks to William Minister Thank you for having me on and I look forward to talking to you again Farm View with Kieran O'Connor on WLR. With GlanviaConnect.com. Thousands of products in the palm of your hand. And you're very welcome back to part two of Farm View. Now, before I talk to the founder of a Warford based company, Farmer Hoof, very successful story indeed locally, let's have a look at some eyes from our farming calendar. Turning to our farmer markets and country markets, which indeed are proven very successful across the city and county. This Saturday and every Saturday morning, we've Warford Farmers Market in John Roberts Square, and also, of course, on Saturday morning, we've Stravely Farmers Market now trading outdoors every Saturday morning. On Sunday, there's more Farmers Market, Castle Avenue, there's more every Sunday, running from 10 on Sunday morning till 4 in the afternoon while on Thursday mornings it's Dungarvan Farmers Market in Grattan Square Dungarvan every Thursday from 9 until 2 while on Friday we've Dungarvan Country Markets at the Causeway Tennis Club in Abbeyside running from 9 till half past 1 while also on Friday mornings we've Warford Country Markets in St Olaf's Hall trading from 9 until 1 on the show jumping front is very busy across the county with the Shanachill House Equestrian Centre at Kilmac their horse and pony leagues continue every Friday evening with the pony leagues from 5 while the horse leagues run every Wednesday also from five. While up west, the Beachfield Equestrian Centre in Kappa, their horse and pony leagues also continue every Saturday morning from 10 in the morning and also on Thursday evenings from 5. And finally to our marts, great to see the marts up and running again. This Saturday morning, of course, we have cattle and calf sales at Warford Ross Mart in New Ross from 10 o'clock. While on Monday, it's Dungarvan Mart's cattle and calf sale every Monday morning running from 11 o'clock. And don't forget, all sales are now also online at livestocklive.com with bids taken from both ringside and online as well. Well, Farm View with Kieran O'Connor on WLR. With GlanviaConnect.com, Ireland's biggest online farming shop and more. Well, on our programme over the last number of years, of course, we love to talk to new Walford based companies who are proving their worth across a wide spectrum of enterprises within the agri-food industry. Of course, one very big industry in Ireland is the whole equine industry. And indeed, with that in mind, we're delighted to welcome the CEO of Pharma Hoof. It's a hoof care technology company, the most technical advanced hoof care system available for enhanced performance and the long-term soundness of your horse. And we're delighted to welcome the CEO and founder, Alex, to our programme. Alex, first of all, you're welcome to Farmview. Hi, thank you very much, Kieran. Alex, you might Tell our listeners, first of all, Pharma Hoof, what it's all about and how did you get involved in this whole area? Okay, so Pharma Hoof is actually a technology platform that was developed in collaboration with a world-class Fari, who's one of our co-founders, a guy named Robert Stevenson. And he was looking for a more hoof-friendly process that would be less invasive than the typical nail on shoe. So he came to me when I was based in Dubai, uh, running a technology and product development firm with a concept. And over the last 18 months, we refined that concept pretty much to address all the problems that you see with traditional shoeing. And obviously this is really innovative as you mentioned, it's been tradition that the farrier and indeed the, the nail in the shoe goes goes back generations really so how difficult was it to actually um, get, get people to buy into this whole system? Yeah well actually it was um, probably one of the most difficult parts of the business was creating kind of a mind shift change to explain to people that yes traditional shoeing will always be around it's not the end of the trade but what we've done is we've developed a platform which can offer a secondary process or a secondary procedure which can assist in areas that would be otherwise too complicated. So really for us, I mean, we came in through the rehab section where we had a lot of people that had tried everything and failed. And then slowly we've grown our reputation into more mainstream shoeing processes. And is it really looking at, I know reading on your, your, your blurb as regards the whole pharma hoof, it's an innovative pharma hoof molds are used to form custom fitted hoof support and protection, highly effective and alternative to traditional Shoeing. So as regards getting your base moving from Dubai to Ireland, what made up that decision for you? Yeah, well, obviously Ireland as a country offers a lot of support for startup and keeping in mind the Irish equine tradition and the history in the country. We felt that it was a great base to launch um, and being based in Ireland just added an extra layer of credibility that we could project outwards because we are selling worldwide. We're in 36 countries currently um, and it does help. Fantastic. To be as an Irish company. And of course, Choosing Warford, we're delighted that you choose. You're based in the IDA uh, enterprise there on the on the Cork Road. So.
So uh, why Waterford? So um, Waterford is obviously close to quite a few big equine and it is quite an equine region itself. We found all the facilities we required to be able to set up quickly and fast and the local infrastructure has been great in helping us to do that. Good to hear. Then as regards the, the, the target audience, first of all, is it more prevention than cure or is it a case when there's a problem people look for these moles or would you prefer people to, to, to get it as a, as a preventative me- measure using the moles instead of the traditional shoeing? Well, in, um, in highly adventurous circumstances, as in sport, you could say that it would be a preventative measure because it just adds a 3D protection layer over the hoof uh, that can protect against impact or stones, uh, situations like that. So we work both on the preventative side to prevent damage from happening, but we also work on the rehab cycle um, as a blanket treatment for cases that have gone a bit too far mm-hmm. or, the would, or the traditionally would require a very complex shoeing and treatment path. Uh, what we can do is we can kind of blanket apply and treat a lot of issues simultaneously. Have you found really that obviously farriers and vets are key to this working with them rather than being in competition with them? I suppose your aim would be getting farriers and vets, first of all, au fait with form a hoof and definitely uh, realising that the various moles that and the multiple sizes that they actually come in. Definitely. I mean, for us, we had to dispel a lot of myths, obviously, when we came into this market because it is a new product. It's a new concept. We have, not, we have nothing to benchmark it against, really. So so uh, we had to create an awareness around the product to say that it was reusable and that the application cost can be mitigated throughout the life cycle of, of the molds and really explain to farriers that this is a very small, compact tool that can go in a car or on a van or even hand carry and can be used to address issues on the spot without complex infrastructure behind. Now, you mentioned earlier in, uh, in, in your blurb as well about the multiple sizes. So from a cost point of view, if a guy purchases molds from you, obviously they can use in various hard horses or as the horses develop and grow as such, if you get them at a, at a very young age, what's the story there as regards the flexibility of, of the moles? Well, we are addressing the the, um, the the entire horse life cycle, you could say. So we have an introductory range of products which are for foals, which are helping with foal confirmation, um, which are our adaptation of extensions. And we go all the way up to sizes for draft horses in the U.S., some cases we even do custom sizes for customers that have something a bit more unique mm. because we have all our design and manufacturing capabilities in-house so we can operate very very quickly and as regards the molds themselves what are they actually made from and uh, what type of, of uh, operation are you working there on the IDA industrial park there on the Cork Road in Waterford yes yeah, so the molds are made of a medical grade silicone um, which we, we found through research is the most durable type of technology and because the molds are designed to flex depending on the type of hoof, this is the best material to use for the application. Being based in work lab in in, um, IDA, we have all the facilities in-house, as I said, to do R&D and um, our office Fabulous, spaces. Yeah. And we also do plan, once obviously restrictions lift, to do clinics. So as regards the cost involved, then, what are we talking about? Or is it, does it depend on the actual mold that guys purchase and uh, front hind and we'll say various sizes? So you might just outline a rough ballpark as regards the cost involved. Well, there are two business models which have started to emerge. Uh, one model is owners purchasing an individual mold for their own horse and then the farrier the vet can just use that when they when they turn up to do the service and then there's the mass purchase of molds for people that have a bigger practice that maybe serve quite a few horses in the territory prices range tremendously depending on territory and country probably the most expensive area to date would probably be california in the u.s so for but in ireland i suppose alex really i'm asking for people who are listening to us who are involved in the whole yeah. equine area be it sport horse equestrian point to pointers national hunt flat horse bloodstock whatever so from an irish perspective uh, you could give a ballpark yeah so from a, from an Irish perspective if you're a customer that wants to get this done from a farrier I would say possibly around 200 euros a foot but again I've noticed that that varies a lot and okay. um, we don't want to get involved directly I understand with uh, just ballpark so you're around 200 from 200 depending on uh, what's involved in the various mould yeah Exactly. I mean, that would be for one of the bigger sizes that can go down to about half for a smaller size. But at the okay. end of the day, it's very hard to establish this because we don't get directly involved in that part of the business. 
Well, allow like, farriers to set their own pricing. Of course. So I, I'm delighted. And what type of response are you getting from farriers and vets? I know you're only basically launching this product as we speak. Uh, what has the feedback been like, Alex? We've already had a lot of successful applications. Um, as I said, it has been a learning curve. But in order to assist this, we are introducing an e-learning platform which should go live in a month or so. So people will be able to self-train. Um, but the way we're doing it now is by video conferencing. So we have a very strong customer support element in the business. And if anyone is interested in finding out more, then they're happy. we're happy to, to discuss individual cases uh, with one of our equine experts. Well, Alex, listen, I think it's a fantastic concept. Uh, as you say, the old traditional shoeing obviously has, its, has served us very well. But obviously with these new molds and indeed they come in various sizes, as you mentioned, it's a breakthrough. It's a reusable mold system revolutionizing the way we care for our horses' hooves. And they're such an important part of the equine world. Alex, to yourself and all involved, listen, congratulations, well done. We're delighted you've chosen water as your base. And if people want to find out more about Farmer Hoof, um, could you, you, might, you, you might guide them to, you, to your websites and other channels. Yeah, so first of all, thank you very much for the kind words. It, it, it's important for us to get the appreciation. Um, anyone that wants more information can contact us through our website, farmerhoof.com, or through one of our social channels on Instagram and Facebook. And then no. we will have one of our consultants answer any questions. Well, listen, once again, congrats. Well done. Farmerhoof.com if you want to find out more. I know you're launching, uh, as you say, in the next few weeks. And hopefully, when, when please God, post-COVID, we'll have some demonstrations and hopefully to see some of your work at first hand over the next few months and indeed years as well. Alex, to yourself, Sabrina and all of all, congrats. Well done. And best of luck with Farmer Hoof. Thanks for talking to us. Thank you very much, Kieran. Have a good day. Well, a few weeks back, we spoke to Simon Fraser, coordinator of the Farmers Market in Dungarvan, as they reopened after the COVID lockdown. Well, we've gone back again just to find an update on how well they're going. First of all, Simon, I spoke to you when you reopened and you were a bit worried and concerned about how well it would go, but you seem to be delighted, judging by the gang here around today, the buzz in Dungarvan. It's been absolutely mobbed, uh, Karen, and then uh, it's the same in nearly all the markets. People, apart from being happy to meet people, they need something to do. So they're actually coming out and... Uh, supporting it incredibly well I've noticed all the stall holders are back and even a few new ones as well yeah yeah, we've got a few new ones we're getting applications every week we obviously with the social distancing we can't squeeze too many in but at the moment we could be packing them in the variety of, of range of products available here, even with your own um, shrubs that, that are here, there's great variety and all growing and produced locally. All produced locally and the, 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 what I really notice, and I've done a few markets elsewhere in Mahan Point and places like that, is we have real unique quality here and we've got a re- as good a range as any market. We're a small market but we have a great range of product. The support you're getting from the council just before we came on air, which has been very important and really where Grattan Square has been transformed with extra seating and planters put in so there's a great feel and vibe about the place well there is but also we're very aware that the other businesses need their chance as well because they've all been hammered and it's great that seating is going outside and as far as I can see nobody's arguing about space because we're all in it together and we've really got to get on with it and we're, what happens is everyone supports everybody else and it's great speaking to people from the various markets in Warford City and Stradbally here now up in Lismore all doing well indeed the country markets as well. You mentioned also possibility of extending here on a Saturday. Your Thursday mornings nine to two, but you're talking about going Saturday as well. Well, the, there's last year the council came to us and said um, that a good number of the local businesses had asked for a Saturday market, and we're delighted with that because it's come full circle from ten or so years ago. And not everyone was happy with it, but we, I think, people are aware of the large quantity of people that come into town on potentially quiet days and. As was said before, the market isn't just a trading place, it's a great meeting place. Yeah. And well, well, definitely, the, any concern you had, definitely looking at today, the way it has developed. And I must say, well done to all of, all of the stall holders here, all doing an excellent job with social distancing. And indeed, as you say, now with the possibility of um, some stalls coming on a Saturday morning. It's going to start low-key, small, and we'll see how it goes. We'll grow it a bit, hopefully. Um, and we'll, obviously, we've got to be aware of the other businesses. Right. We want to all join in together. So we're, we'll start small, uh, low-key, and see how we go. And there's more doing well. I know you're very Lismore much involved with more Sundays jam- as well. The, the interesting thing with Lismore, first day I, I was aware that we, we could be very quiet because there's no tourists. Yes. What strangely has happened is that local Irish tourists have filled that void Brilliant. and people are coming out and it's, it's busier than it was before. 
Well, Simon, great to hear such a positive story for the market here. And there's more need right around the county. The feedback has been great. Keep up the good work. I'm delighted by yourselves, the council, and the whole community have rode in behind you. And thank you for your support here. Yeah. Well, before I go on the racing front, great to see racing return locally this weekend at Tremor. Although it's behind closed doors, I want to wish new chairman Carl Casey and track manager Owen Byrne every success and lead all the team at Tremor this Saturday afternoon. So that's my lot for this week's programme. Once again, my thanks to Sean and Ollie for all their help in putting this week's programme together. So from myself, Kieran O'Connor, it's goodbye for now. Stay safe and hopefully I'll have your company again same time next week. Farm View with Kieran O'Connor on WLR. With glanviaconnect.com, Ireland's biggest online farming shop and more.